Hello friends, in this video I am going to talk about idiotype reading. Please subscribe my channel to get the further updates. Idiotype is a new plant type which is expected to perform or behave in a predictable manner within a defined environment. There are two terms which are somewhat similar only there is a spelling difference and the meaning is also different. One is idiotype and one other is idiotype. Idiotype is a new plant type as I already told you it is a designed one whereas idiotype is the morphological features of chromosome of a particular plant species. The one step ahead it is also called as ideogram that is diagrammatic representation of chromosome morphology of an organism. Coming to idiotype breeding. Crop idiotype is a plant model expected to yield greater quantity of grains, fiber, oil and other useful products when developed as a cultivar. Term idiotype was uh, proposed by Donald, uh, Donald in 1968 in wheat and further it was elaborated by Donald and Hamlin. The main points about idiotypes are crop idiotype refers to model plants or ideas, plant type for a specific environment. Donald included only morphological characters to define a, an idiotype of wheat. Subsequently, physiological and biochemical traits were also included for broadening the concept of crop idiotype. Ideal plants or model plants are expected to give higher yield than old cultivars in a defined environment. Idiotype is a moving goal which changes according to climatic situation, type of cultivation, national policy, market requirement, etc. In other words, it has to be redesigned depending upon these factors. Thus, development of crop idiotype is a continuous process. It is a difficult and slow method of cultivar development because of various morphological, physiological and biochemical characters have to be combined a single genotype from different sources. Defining idiotype depends on several factors that is enlisted here. First one is cropping system definition, indices and its uh, importance, physical resources, soil and water management in cropping system, assessment of land use, plant idiotype for dry lands and plant growth regulator with their role in sustainability. The choice of trait in idiotype breeding depends on importance of a trait in enhancing yield, heritable variation must be present for a character, measurement of trait should be inexpensive and reliable, trait should have high heritability. There are majorly three types of idiotypes, isolation, competitive and crop idiotype. Isolation idiotype means the crops respond well when they are spaced well and in isolation. If we are cultivating them in a commercial scale, they will yield poorly and we can't expect their yield as they perform in isolation. Competition idiotype. Competition idiotype is nothing but they perform well in competition with other varieties or other types. Whereas the crop idiotype means they yield good in good crop density of the same variety. This is the main difference between three types of idiotypes. There are certain other types of idiotypes also based on the requirement and the different aspects. Isolation idiotype is a model plant type performed best when plants are space planted. This is in case of cereals. Isolation idiotype is lax, free tillering. Competitive, it performs well in genetically heterogeneous population such as segregating generation of crosses. In case of cereals, competition idiotype is tall, leafy, free tillering, plant that is able to shade its less aggressive neighbors and thereby gain a larger share of radiation, nutrients and water. 
the third and most important is crop area type where most of our crops perform in this way this performs best at commercial crop tents it is because it's a poor competitor it performs well when it is surrounded by plants of the same form but it performs less well when it is surrounded by plants of other forms example competitive idiotype and also in isolation in case of cereals crop idiotype is erect separately a tillered plant with small erect leaves as i already told you there are other kinds of uh, classification also one is market idiotype that include traits like seed color seed size cooking and uh, baking quality etc since these traits determine the market ac acceptability of the produce then climate uh, climatic idiotype that includes trait important in climatic adaptation example early maturity thermo period insensitivity heat and cold tolerance drought tolerance photo period insensitivity etc stress idiotype in this traits resistant to the concerned abiotic or biotic stress next is disease or pest idiotype this is resistance to concerned disease and insect pest edific idiotype it is for specific conditions like soil tolerance water logging etc coming to the characteristics of crop idiotype as modern varieties are always planted at commercial scale so their characters are uh, given more uh, focus here uh, it should be a weak competitor that is able to accept all the photosynthate either from its own green surface or from other parts of the plant idiotype will be the most efficient in utilizing its environmental resources idiotype must include morphological and physiological characteristics that result in a high harvest index a crop idiotype must be grown as far as possible in a weed free situation in view of it being a weak competitor coming to the factors affecting idiotype there are several factors which affect development of uh, ideal plant type idiotype differs based on crop species cultivation practice socio economic condition of farmers and economic use of plant parts first one is crop species idiotype differs from crop to crop the idiotype of monocots significantly differ from those of dicots in monocots tillering is more important whereas in dicots branching is one of the important feature of idiotype second is cultivation factor the idiotype also differ with regard to cultivation feature of irrigated crop differs from that of rain fed rain fed crops need drought resistance fewer and smaller leaves to reduce water loss through transpiration in dicots intermediate types are required for rain fed for rain fed condition because intermediate type can produce another flush of flowers in the first flush is affected by drought conditions third is socio economic condition of farmers for example dwarf sorghum is ideal for mechanical harvesting in usa but it is not suitable for the farmers of uh, africa and asia where the stocks are used for fuel or hut construction Sec fourth is economic use the idiotype uh, differs with economic use of different uh, consumers example dwarf types are useful in sorghum and pearl millet when the crop is ground for grain purpose but when these crops are ground for fodder purpose it the requirement will be different tall structure is desirable here moreover less leafy types are desired for grain purpose and more leafy genotypes for fodder purpose the larger leaves are also desirable in case of fodder crops the steps in idiotype development donald in 1968 suggested that a basic idiotype should be first developed for the optimum non limiting environment 
quality considerations would determine the limit of size, shape, etc. of the economic parts. Current agronomic practices would determine the limit of plant structure, branching and other features. It should now be assumed to be what changes in particular traits would improve yield potential in the target environment. The choice of character to be included in an idiotype will also depend on certain other considerations. The four important steps in idiotype development are development of conceptual or theoretical model, selection of base material, incorporation of desirable characters into single genotype, then selection of ideal or model plant type. First one is conceptual or theoretical model development. Idiotype consists of various morphological and physiological traits. The values of various morphological and physiological traits are specified to develop a conceptual theoretical model. Example, plant height is important for fathers. Maturity duration is important for rain fed. Similarly, leaf number, leaf angle, leaf size, photosynthetic rate, etc. are specified for each crops and each situation. The second one is selection of base material. This is an important step after the development of conceptual model of idiotype. Genotype to be used in uh, devising a model plant type should have broad genetic base and wider adaptability so that the new plant type can be successfully grown over a wide range of environmental conditions with stable yield. Genotypes for plants stature, maturity duration, leaf size and angles are selected from the global gene pool of the concerned crop species. Genotypes resistant or tolerant to drought, soil salinity, alkalinity, disease and insects are selected from the gene pool with the cooperation of physiologists, soil scientists, pathologists and en entomologists. The third is incorporation of desirable traits. After combining various morphological and physiological traits from different selected genotypes into a single genotype, knowledge of the association between various characters is essential before starting hybridization program because it helps in combining of various characters. Linkage between producers like uh, single cross, three way cross, multiple cross, back cross, composite crossing, example mutation breeding, heterosis breeding, etc. are used for the development of ideal plant type in majority of the crop plants. Back crossing is commonly used for transferring the oligogenic traits from selected germplasm lines into the background of an adopted genotype. The fourth one is selection of ideal plant type. Plant combining desirable morphological and physiological traits are selected in segregating population and are intermated to achieve the desired plant type. Morphological features are judged through visual observation and physiological parameters are recorded with the help of sophisticated instruments. Screening for resistance to drought, soil salinity, alkalinity, disease and insect is done under controlled conditions. This task is completed with the help of scientists from disciplines of physiology, soil science, pathology and entomology. Finally, genotypes combining traits specified in the conceptual model are selected, multiplied, tested over locations and released for commercial cultivation. Swaminathan in 1972 has listed several desirable attributes of crop idiotype with special reference to multiple cropping in the tropics and subtropics. The features are, first one is superior population performance, high productivity per day, high photosynthetic ability, low photorespiration, photo and thermosensitivity, high response to nutrients, high productivity per unit of water, multiple resistant to insects and diseases, better protein quantity and quality, crop canopies that can retain and 
fix a maximum carbon dioxide and suitability to mechanization. Coming to the objectives or major emphasis of idiotype breeding. Idiotype breeding can be defined as a method of crop improvement which is used to enhance yield potential through genetic manipulation of individual plant characters are chosen in such a way that each character contributes towards increasing economic yield. That means the end use or economic yield is a major task in idiotype breeding which is pre-designed. Uh, the main features are first one emphasis on individual trait. In idiotype breeding, individual morphological and physiological traits enhance the yield. The value of each character is specified before initiating breeding work. It includes yield enhancing traits. Various plant characters to be included in the idiotype are identified <coughs> through correlation analysis. Only those characters which exhibit positive association with yield are included in the model. Exploits physiological variation. Genetic differences exist for various physiological characters like uh, photosynthetic efficiency, photorespiration, nutrient uptake, etc. Idiotype breeding makes use of genetically controlled physiological variation in increasing crop yield besides various agronomic traits. The fourth feature is slow progress. Idiotype breeding is a slow method of cultivar development because incorporation of various desirable characters from different sources into a single genotype takes long time. Moreover, sometimes undesirable linkage affects the progress adversely. Selection In idiotype breeding, selection is focused on individual plant character which enhances yield. Designing of model the idiotype breeding the phenotypes of new variety to be developed is specified in terms of morphological and physiological traits in advance. Idiotypic breeding is an interdisciplinary approach. It is in two sense an interdisciplinary approach because it involves scientists from different disciplines. It's a continuous process because new idiotypes have to be developed to meet changing and increasing demand. Thus, development of idiotype is a moving target. Coming to idiotypes of selected crops. It may include cereals, pulses, some of the oil seeds and commercial crop. The first one is rice. Why rice? Because idiotype breeding was first described in rice even though idiotype was defined in uh, 1968 by Donald but Jennings gave idiotype of rice in 1964. He suggested that rice ideal plant type should have uh, characters like semi-dwarf stature, high tillering capacity, short, erect, thick and highly angled leaves. Jennings also included morphological traits in his model. Now emphasis is also given to morphological physiological traits in development of rice idiotype. The second crop is wheat. It's the most important because first time Donald described idiotype in wheat only. He proposed with the features like short strong stem. It imparts lodging resistance and reduces the losses due to lodging. Second is erect leaves. Such leaves provide better arrangement for proper light distribution resulting in higher photosynthesis and carbon dioxide fixation. Few small leaves. Leaves are important sites of uh, photosynthesis or else we can say it's a source. Uh, it also involves in uh, respiration, transpiration, few and small reduce water loss due to transpiration. Large ear, this will produce more grains per year. 
presence of ons ons contribute towards photosynthesis a single culm thus donald included only morphological traits in his idiotype all the traits are based on physiological uh, considerations finley in 1968 doubted the utility of single culm in wheat idiotype considered tillering as important feature of wheat flag type a wheat plant with moderately short but broad flag leaf long flag leaf should give yield per plant asana proposed wheat idiotype for rain fed conditions the third important crop is maize it is an important cereal in 1975 mox and peers proposed idiotype in maize the higher yields were obtained from the plants consisting of stiff vertically oriented leaves above the ear maximum photosynthetic efficiency efficient translocation of photosynthate into grains small tessel size cold tolerance for germinating seeds and developing seedlings barley Rasmussen in 1987 reviewed the work of idiotype breeding and also suggested idiotype for sixth row barley he proposed uh, in barley higher yield can be obtained from the combination of characters like short strong stem few small erect leaves high harvest index erect a nature ons and single culm coming to a idiotype concept in pulses overall in pulses determinate plant type erect and upright plant average plant height early vigor early flowering and synchronous maturity pod bearing from well above the soil surface more pods per plant and more number of seeds per pod high harvest index and yield stability are given importance in order to get the better yield and quality parameters specifically in chickpea for rain fed condition early vigor 50 to 60 cm height with 9 to 10 secondary branches tall erect semi erect plant more number of pods per plant and podding from 10th node are recommended in case of irrigated condition high input responsiveness 75 to 90 cm tall and erect habit with broom shaped branching behavior synchronous flowering delayed senescence and determinancy long fruiting branches and short internodes lodging resistance pod bearing from 20 cm above the ground are recommended here is the pictures representing the idiot type of chickpea in north india high biomass more primary branches and long duration whereas in south india low biomass less primary branches and short duration coming to pigeon pea for long and medium duration the idiot types recommended are semi dwarf plant type may be 1.5 to 1.8 meter height for mechanized plant protection open canopy with the uh, determinancy non cluster pod bearing long fruiting branches for uh, high yield middle and top bearing spreading types for intercropping in south and central asia india Imp- uh, compact plant type for intercropping in northern india this is a picture depicting idiotype of pigeon pea long fruiting branches in kofi then top pod bearing non cluster pod bearing and uh, determinate plant type in mung bean for summer or z season short duration that is 50 to 60 days and this is recommended in the fallow lands in order to um give chance for the next crop as early as possible here medium plant height of 60 to 80 cm with short duration of 50 to 60 days 
determinate growth habit and uh, synchronous maturity, high initial growth vigor, more number of pods at top of plant and non-shattering habit, longer pods with more than 10 seeds per pod, tolerance to terminal heat stress. For Carib season, the idiotype designed is optimum duration of 65 to 75 days, balanced vegetative growth, clear distinction between vegetative and reproductive phase, tall fill plants like 80 to 100 cm with more branches, synchronous maturity, more number of clusters per plant and pods per cluster, more number of seeds per pod, shattering and pre-harvest sprouting tolerance. Commercial crop cotton. The idiotype defined in this crop is short stature of 90 to 120 centimeter, compact and symphodial plant habit making pyramidal shape, determinate the fruiting habit with unimodal distribution of balling, short duration that is 150 to 165 days, responsive to high fertilizer dose high degree of interplant competitive ability, high degree of resistance to insect pest and disease, and high physiological efficiency. This is a general model of cotton cultivation. Specifically coming to irrigated cotton, in this condition plants of short stature 90 to 120 centimeter, compacted symporial plant habit, short duration, responsive to high fertilizer dose, high degree of resistance to insect and pests, bowl size in proposed to be between 3.5 to 4 grams. The rain-fed cotton, Singh and Narayan in 1993 proposed idiotype for rain-fed condition. Here, few smaller and thick leaves with sparse hairiness, medium to big ball size that is 3.5 to 4 gram response to nutrients high degree of resistance to insect and disease synchronous boil balling habit and short stature of 75 to 80 centimeter in general idiotype for cotton was also recommended by Singh in sorghum and pearl millet here Improvement in plant type has been achieved through use of dwarfing genes. In these crops, dwarf F1 hybrids have been developed which have made combined harvesting possible. The next is Brassica. This was, uh, the model was proposed by Bhargava but in case of Brassica napus that was proposed by Thurling in 1991. It is to reduce transpiration reduce shading of pods and reduced expenditure on photosynthesis. The main habit of idiotyping brassica is uh, comparatively moderate height with less number of leaves because more number of leaves may cause reduced pod yield. So in order to increase the biological or harvest index there should be less number of leaves. Coming to the merits of idiotype breeding. Idiotype breeding is an effective method of enhancing yield through manipulation of various morphological and physiological crop characters. Thus, it exploits both morphological and physiological variation. In this method, of various morphological and physiological traits are specified and each character or trait contributes towards enhanced yield. Idiotype breeding involves experts from the disciplines of breeding, physiology, biochemistry, entomology, pathology. Each specialist contributes in the development of model plants for traits related to his own field. This is an effective method of breaking yield barriers through the use of genetically controlled physiological variation for various characters contributing towards higher yield. This provides solution to several problems at a time like disease, insect and uh, larching resistance, maturity duration, yield and quality by combining desirable genes for these traits from different sources into a single genotype. It is an efficient method of developing cultivars for specific environments. 
the demerits incorporation of several desirable morphological and physiological and disease resistant traits from different sources into a single genotype is a difficult task sometimes combining of some characters is not possible due to tight linkage or pleiotropic effect when desirable and undesirable characters present together presence of such linkage hinders the progress of idiotype breeding this process is a slow method of cultivar development because combining together of various morphological and physiological features from different sources like more time than traditional breeding were important is uh, improvement is made in yield and one or two other characters idiotype breeding is not a, a substitute for traditional or conventional breeding it's a supplement to the farmer it's a moving object which changes with change in knowledge new requirements national policy climatic conditions etc thus new idiotype have to involve to meet the challenge and increasing demand of economic products in the modern days now in the era of genomics and marker techniques genomic breeding by design is a technique which have the modern idiotypic concept coming to future prospects of idiotype breeding india has achieved self sufficiency in the production of food grains through modification of plant characters and development of high yielding varieties and hybrids the further breakthrough in yield and quality has to be achieved through exploitation of physiological variation idiotype both for high and low input technology conditions have to be developed to further the yield potential of food grain crops idiotype have to be evolved for straight varieties and hybrids there is ample scope for development of hybrid idiotypes in crops like maize sorghum pearl millet and rice china developed hybrid rice for commercial which covers more than 18 million hectares crop idiotype have been developed in cereals and millets there is ample scope in ideal plants or model plants of pulses soil seeds cotton and several other crops in these crops again idiotype have to be evolved both for irrigated as well as rain fed cultivation in cotton idiotype have to be developed for regard to agroclimatic conditions in addition to traditional breeding approach biotechnological especially tissue culture and protoplast technology have to be utilized in further designing new plant types biotechnology may help in developing insect resistant cultivars to the use of transgenic plants development of idiotype is a continuous process it's a moving goal which changes with knowledge requirement and change in economic policy this should be developed to adverse conditions like heat cold salinity and drought conditions thank you i hope you liked my video and do not forget to subscribe my channel thanks once again